How would you describe the difference be in between attachment and love? Ooh, okay. Love this one. I've talked about this before. It's, it's very similar to the question, um, how do you describe the difference between like biological attachment and psychological attachment, right? Or attachment as it is discussed in like spiritual circles, somewhat, somewhat similar. So what is love? To my mind, love is positive regard. That's all it is. Love is positive regard. Um, and in that case, love, well, the way I think of it as unconditional love, that exists independent of any, mm, like, a, of a relationship, so to speak. To me, a relationship is a structure. It's a, it's a, a collaborative structure that you construct um, out of a system of shared values, beliefs, and priorities. And it's wonderful when that structure kind of flexibly melds and gels with the positive regard that you have for someone. And when things flow easily and you don't have to try so hard at them and it feels like you're not efforting, there's that, that there, the threads of these two dimensions weave together very seamlessly. And it's sort of like a gestalt, right? Um, for those of you that don't know that term, it's if you were to imagine like um, a glowing fluorescent sign where all the light bulbs, right, they, they're all aligned in a certain order so that you can read the word and each light is lighting up. But you don't, when you see the sign, you don't look at each light bulb, you read the word, right? It reads as one full word. So when we talk about a gestalt, a gestalt is when there are different component pieces that come together and we perceive it as a whole, but it's actually, it actually is, and the, the whole, the sum of the whole is greater than its parts. The other metaphor I use is when you think about batteries, one battery has a certain amount of power, another battery has a certain amount of power. But the thing about batteries, when you combine them, the power they generate is actually much bigger then if you were just to take one plus one, it's more like one plus one equals 10 as opposed to one plus one equals two, right? So it's the idea that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And so when we think about relationships, I would have you think of them as these gestalt experiences. We, we see the relationship as a whole. We often experience the relationship as a whole. That's how the, the feeling experience of the relationships com comes through in that way. But it is made up of these component parts attachment impulses is a component part positive regard conditional or unconditional or unconditional is a component part values priorities and compatibility dimensions is another component part right so so and, and a host of other things culture um leisure and entertainment like all the dimensions of of Life's varieties get woven in there, plans for the future, financial desires, all of it, right? So these are all different component parts of a relationship. When our survival systems kick on and the attachment component becomes predominant, that is usually when people find their way to me because when we are stuck in a state of let's say hypermobilization, our nervous system is kind of on a state of height alert, sort of like a fan whirring in the background most of the time because we're, we're constantly thinking about relationship proximity, whether it is wanting to be in close proximity or whether it is constantly moving away from, notice that even if I'm pushing or pulling, the intensity of that the intensity of either action is actually equivocal, right? So we would say that someone who's dismissive avoidant always like this, that they are experiencing the same intensity that someone who's going like this, right? So I would actually argue that both of those people are experiencing the same degree of energetic charge in their bodies. They're just managing it differently. So when someone shows up with that degree of intensity, going on 
in there. And that gets expressed through the way they think, feel, and respond to everything. <laughs> Most things. Some of us can compartmentalize or we just find ways to sublimate it so that it becomes uh, in service, right? So we can take that kind of intensity. Some of us can take that kind of intensity and apply it to things like our career, right? So, so that kind of intensity works really well in a context where being productive is rewarded, right? Because it sets up an A to B equation and we can deal with our need for approval by working from A to B. And in the world of material form, it's very easy to do that in ways that are rewarded. But that is not the same energy that's gonna reward us in relationships because in relationships, it's more about relaxing, allowing, attracting, and um, having a more in, inner life and experience. There's an organicity to it. And so we can get confused when, why is everything going? I'm such a high performer at work. I get along with my colleagues. Even my friendships go really well. But when it comes to relationships, for some reason, that isn't working. Like my tools aren't working that way. I would argue that oftentimes those tools will work for you. It's just, we have to reframe the application of them, right? Relationships, love in the form of relationships is going to incorporate some attachment concerns because we have an attachment system for a reason. <laughs> it's not like this useless thing that we got that was only intended to make our lives hell, right? Like, we attach ourselves to people because, well, on the level of biological concerns, it's a survival mechanism, right? But also because there's a tenderness that can evolve from bearing witness to each other's experiences and to being mutually supportive. Like we're not all at our best all the time forever after in relationships. Sometimes one of us needs more support than the other. Sometimes the other is going to have to carry it carry a heavier load for a while while this person just has to crumble into a heap. And so attachment, these, these impulses of attachment and connection and feeling that sense of sort of unspoken mm, magne magnetism to someone, those impulses and drives really convince our egos that this is worth it over time, right? That and to recognize the deliciousness of that sense of coming together. And then eventually being able to understand that that creates kind of like a safe space for us to grow and explore in the context of the relation between you and within you. And so this space between you not only builds this, this relationship as a gestalt experience, but it also, that gestalt experience continues to inform your internal growth process, which is why I think that um, people who attract, find themselves in, in my sphere tend to experience their relationships as assignments for spiritual growth on some level. And they want their relationships to be containers for spiritual growth. That's both an inner process and a relational process, right? Because we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. So that means we are experiencing both an individual and a collective experience. So we're playing with paradox, right? And then we, we have different forms of love, I think that evolve over time. So I've talked a little bit about this before in other videos where I think that our, our experience of love kind of evolves through different stages. The first one I usually talk about is like buddy love and Buddy love is when we first start playing with, with this idea. And it's sort of like, it's very companionable. There's a friend that you get along with well enough. You share some, you know, fun uh, erotic experiences together. You explore the varieties of life. There's some um, com companionship sort of quality going on there. There's mutual respect and regard. And buddy love relationships usually just come to a natural conclusion. Um, so like you might imagine, like maybe you had a summer fling with someone, or maybe there was, um, a relationship in college or in high school that was really meaningful for you, but it was clear that this wasn't going to be your forever relationship. And that didn't make it any less significant or important to you. So those relationships kind of have their natural evolution and conclusion. Then we have what I consider to be like team spirit love. And this is when 
this is a lot of people get married in team spirit love. And this is when we're really looking at the compatibility dimensions where we tend to perceive our partners as like our partner in crime. They're my teammate. They've got my back. Um, and we're going to do this thing. We're going to have the kids. We're going to buy the house. We're going to, whatever it is together. We're in it together. This we're going to, we're going to recreate the structure that we believe is the way we want to move through life. And so that goes on for a while. And, um, so that's kind of like a team spirit love. There's a primary focus on the navigation of the world of form. There's a primary focus on just getting through the work day, getting the kids to school, going on vacations, catering to the needs of family, catering to the needs of cultural traditions and, and requirements, blah, 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 right? And so that goes on for a while. And then we may evolve into what I consider to be like soulmate relationship. So usually at that point, team spirit is no longer enough. Um, usually for one, if this is a long-term relationship, usually for one, as opposed to the other, even if it's, I mean, some people get there very quickly, <laughs> um, but some people who jump to soulmate relationships, but miss out on team spirit kind of have to go through team spirit before they can really come back to what I call ascended partnership. It's not a linear process. These are just the different things I notice. Um, but with the soulmate relationship, so soulmate, what is a soulmate relationship? So a soulmate relationship is a relationship that removes the barriers to your soul, connects you to your soul, right? The partner is holding a point of focus so that you can become aware of what's going, what's going on inside of you in response to them. So just by there being there, you're, what happens is all this stuff comes up. I'm assuming so many negative things about myself in their rejection, right? Or I'm assuming so many positive things about myself and their acceptance. I'm all these, I believe this, or I believe that based on what they do or don't do. What is that telling you about yourself? What, what dusty corners is that showing you that need to be swept out in order to create the space for the massive flow of energy that you are requesting? when you ask for a relationship that is about spiritual expansion. That's a massive request. <laughs> we need to make space for that. So when you make that request and it will be made on the level of soul, often we're not conscious that we're making that request, first we'll come in a soul meet because they are there to help you get rid of everything that is between you and the essence of your being fully embracing and residing within the essence of your being. What are the stories I'm telling myself that are coming up in this painful experience, right? What is the pain exactly? Mostly the assumptions that I'm making about myself and the assumptions that I'm making about what connections are possible for me in this time-space reality, right? And then once we start to release those, we start to experience what's called ascended, what I think of as ascended partnership. Now, this is when the relationship is less about this volleying of energy that's going back and forth between you, that push-pull, anxious, avoidant, trap kind of dynamic. The energy is not going like this anymore. When you start evolving into uh, an ascended partnership, what happens is instead of trying to share the same oxygen tank, now you've both got your own resources, right? You both can breathe on your own. And so what happens? So instead of being stuck in this linear back and forth, now you start moving in 5D. <laughs> you start moving in all these different dimensions and you can move in parallel to each other and you can merge. You can have that mergy experience without a fear of losing yourself because you know that you have the ability to come back into your sense of autonomy and separateness just as easily. So you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And there's so much more to be explored and expanded upon. And so what happens is once we arrive at this place, now we're working collaboratively. We're not, we don't need our partner to give us this, this, and this in order to feel safe or wanted. The needs kind of, they soften, they relax. They, it's not like you don't want things anymore. We're still spiritual beings having a physical experience, but the voraciousness of that, the attachment hunger, isn't so profound. And we don't have so many attachments 
psychological attachments to the ways in which those desires must be met. We're a lot more um, open to receiving the quality of the energy that we are seeking in a variety of forms, because anything we want or need, we want or need it because we think we're going to feel better once we have that thing. And what is a feeling? It is emotional energy moving through your body. It's energy moving through your body. So when you say you want something, what you are saying is, I want a nuanced quality of an energetic experience in my life. And it's a lot easier, of course, when the material apparatuses in our environments show up to help us conjure that energy, but those are not the only ways to conjure that energy. If I had you close your eyes and imagine what you wanted, or I had you close your eyes and imagine when you felt that way before, you could summon that. And if we moved that way, if we sounded that way, if we painted colors that make us think of that feeling, if we held hands with good friends and we all imagined that we were flowing in that feeling together, what would happen? We'd be witches dancing in a circle, conjuring the feeling you want to feel. And then what would happen? Magical things would start showing up and universal winks and synchronicities would enter into your life. And then we'd be burned at the stake, <laughs> right? Because we're making it happen. That's how we shortcut this. Yes, you can, you can go around trying to move, arranging your environments like chess pieces on a game board. And you can learn strategic things to say this and that behavioral psychology, blah, 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 to try to persuade, cajole, negotiate the people and places and things in your environments, of course, you're going to get really tired doing it that way. In my perspective, that's exhausting. Um, or we can find these more, um, I think, revitalizing ways to do this. Um, and so, so that is where we start to move into a space of ascended partnership. We're calling in a relationship that is about collaboration. It's about an expansion of consciousness, not just for this thing going on between you, but also for the collective. Because you also perceive yourselves as existing as part of a whole that's bigger than yourself, a gestalt that's larger than the gestalt of your relationship, right? And so there's a generative quality to the relationship. So, so the point of this is to express that I believe that relationships are like a gestalt experience. It's, it, we experience it like one big thing, but it's really made up of component parts. Attachment impulses is a component part. Um, un re positive regard, unconditional regard is another composite, composite part. Values, priorities, compatibility dimensions, other component parts. We experience them like a, like a flow, right? But breaking down these component parts, I believe evolves over time. The things we need and want, like the values and compatibility dimensions also evolve over time. And so as we start to experience that evolution, we may find that the ways in which we are understanding and wanting to inhabit romantic relationships can evolve in these ways. And so those are the four ways that I've seen it through buddy love, team spirit, soulmate relationships, and ascended partnerships. And as I said before, it's not a linear progression. We can jump around there. There can be kind of a cyclical way of going through these experiences, but those are some of the things that I've noticed in my experience. I hope that helps. Also remember to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I put out videos once a week and I wouldn't want you to miss out.